When I get a craving for a strawberry matcha latte, I neither have fresh strawberries in my fridge nor space in my freezer for a stored huge bag full. But I do have loads of canned fruit in my pantry. So how do I turn this into this? Watch and see. <laughs> So today we're going to be making my favorite and very simple version of a vegan strawberry matcha latte. Here are the ingredients needed to make this tasty drink. One can of strawberries. Today we are using organic and in a light syrup. One fourth cup of sugar. I'm using white cane sugar from beets. It may seem like a lot of sugar, but we'll only be using a small amount of the puree in the drink. One flat teaspoon of pitaya powder or fruit. This is optional. Pitaya is also known as dragon fruit or strawberry pear. It is high in nutrients and is packed with essential vitamins and minerals, which may offer many other health benefits. I will be using oat milk for this vegan drink, but you may use any dairy alternative of your choice. One flat teaspoon of matcha powder. I prefer organic and ceremonial, but any drinking grade matcha powder will do just fine. Matcha is said to have 137 times more antioxidants than regularly brewed green tea. It is rich in chlorophyll and has loads of vitamins and may offer numerous health benefits. First, we will begin with the matcha. So today, I will be using a bamboo whisk. If you don't have access to one of these, don't worry. You can also use a spoon or a fork. But the idea is we wanna make sure that there's no clumps of matcha once we mix it together. First, we need to boil a kettle. All right, to begin, we will need our one flat teaspoon of matcha powder. And 25 milliliters of the hot water. That comes to about just under two tablespoons. And remember to be extra careful whenever pouring hot water. And you'll just pour this directly into the matcha powder. And then whisk until combined. The other benefit to a bamboo whisk is that it aerates the matcha. Along with it going around in a circular to grab the bits of matcha around the sides of the bowl, we also want to go back and forth in a sort of W type shape in order to really give it a good whisk and make sure it's fully combined. The hot water that we're whisking it with really brings out the flavor of the matcha. We want to make sure that our hot water is not too hot. I would say give it a few minutes after it's done boiling, and then that will be the correct temperature. And remember, whenever you're done using the bamboo whisk, make sure that you go ahead and wash it off really well. There's none of the matcha left on it. We don't want that to dry and get caked into the bamboo. So just clean it off right away, let it air dry, and then you can go ahead and put it away. All right, we're gonna leave this off to the side and begin on our strawberry puree. So first we'll begin by pouring the entire can of strawberries into the blender. It's as easy as that. Next is 1 fourth cup of the sugar, or about 52 grams. So now we're gonna pop this on the blender and blend until smooth. Now, as you can tell, this is not bright red but we're gonna get it there with my secret ingredient of the pitaya powder. And here's the one flat teaspoon of the pitaya powder. And now we'll just pop this back on the blender and watch the magic happen. As you can see, now it's that bright, vibrant red. All we did was just add a little bit of a really healthy superfood, pitaya. All right guys, we're at the final step. So I've transferred my strawberry puree into a glass container, and it has such a high sugar content that all I need to do is just pop a lid on this, and it will keep in the fridge for about a week. The other thing that I've done with it in the past is put it into an ice cube tray, and then that way I have little strawberry puree ice cubes that I can pop into other beverages. Once the strawberry puree has frozen into ice cubes, you can always just keep it in your freezer and add it to things like smoothies, and you can also put sparkling water on top of it. So the first step is to put the strawberry puree into the glass, and we have a measuring scoop of about a fourth cup, which is roughly about 60 milliliters. I 
I definitely recommend using crushed ice. That way when you pour the milk in, it will hit the ice first and it won't break up the layer of the strawberry. If your goal in making this drink is to have a more obvious layered effect for social media, then in the blending process, add more sugar to the strawberry because that gives the liquid more stability. But our goal here today is taste, although we will be getting the layers. When you pour your milk alternative, aim for the ice. Best, if possible, to make sure that your oat milk and your can of strawberries is left in the fridge overnight. This will allow the drink to be much colder when you drink it, and also it will blend a little bit better. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and put the matcha on top. Beautiful. Wow, guys, this is beautiful. Take a look. Once everything's actually moved around a bit, we can actually see the layers even better. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about how it tastes. And the best thing about this vegan strawberry matcha latte is it's packed full of antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. Let's mix it up and see how it tastes. All right, I got my reusable bamboo straw. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. It is not too sweet at all. It's very, very earthy. It's got a great flavor. This is delicious. I seriously could drink this every day. Not only were the colors beautiful when you had that layered effect, but now that we've mixed it in, the green is just so bright and vibrant. Mmm. Delicious. I can't wait for you to make this drink at home. And when you do, please be sure to leave a comment below and let me know how it turned out for you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I plan to bring you a brand new drink video every week. Be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you again soon.